All right, so taking our spot illustration and its shape, knowing the text we're going to, to wrap around it, we have some different possible thumbnails for text blocking. Once you have that, then you can start putting it actually together. So identify which approach you like best. I'll often put a little star by it. So let me change the color here. I think this is the one that has the most potential, right? It just makes the most sense. It feels like it's a mascot image or a central kind of symmetrical sticker image. The text should be clean around it, in my opinion, right? So this has nothing to do with how the text actually looks. It has everything to do with where it goes. So if this is the one I'm going to use, that's my basic text blocking thumbnail. Now I want to sketch it with an idea for the actual personality of the type. So what I'm going to do is zoom in on that. I might even take just a screen grab of it. Okay. I'm going to save this but I'm just going to flatten it and save it as a JPEG. My thumbnails. And I'll save it as a copy just to the desktop. So this is for my reference. Assignment 6, text blocking sketch thumbnails. Okay, now I'm going to open up that screen grab, open with Photoshop. I can go ahead and enlarge that. So let's, let's actually make it to size, 16 inches. I'm going to resample it, but also change the proportions here and actually make it 16 inches by 20 inches by 350 pixels per inch. That is our, our full poster size. And that shows us our real space. Also, notice that our posters are gonna have some sort of border. If you have no border on your poster, that's what's called a full bleed poster, but you cannot print things that way. <laughs> yeah, or image size. So what I did is I took my smaller screen grab, this thing, opened it in Photoshop, went to image, image size, and in order to force it to be a different proportion, I unlocked the chain link here. Okay. And I, I might change that back so I don't forget that next time. Because usually we don't, in image size, we, we let it, have locked proportions. But here you see that it, my sketch was a little skinny, and so it stretched it out to what 16 by 20 really is. You can't print with a border. Everything that's printed has kind of a print edge, you know, because ink, if you printed ink all the way to the edge of paper, then ink would spill onto the printing press. So we want to design that border. The posters you see that have no border, that's because they're cut off after the fact. Right? So we're going to have a slight wide edge, which means we can play a little bit with its orientation and its uh, overall size. But really, I'm just trying to solve this problem. So if I go back to assignment five, let's get a little bit cleaner elements now than just my sketch. I can use my full finished illustration if I want. Drop that in. Or sometimes it's less distracting to just use your, your line art, right? So I'll often do that. But I'll go ahead and use the full illustration here. And then I'll use option while I scale it to size it roughly the way I want. So maybe about there. So this is my text blocking, but it's missing a vital component. And it's this thing which is floating on top. So to do that, I'm just going to duplicate my little text block for the word in and move that on top of my spot illustration. 
And that's not going to work. I don't want to just cover up the nose, I, I think. Oh, well, yeah. Might work there. It actually works pretty well there. Might work in the mouth. Yeah, I actually think it works best there. So now I need to decide what kind of quality of typeface I'm going to use. So typeface, which we commonly call fonts, but that's not the correct term, can be tricky things. You know, they can be decorative. They can be uh, very, very readable. They can be kind of funky and odd. They can be hand done. They can be very machined. And a good place to, to start exploring them, just to see your options, is a site that I link in the assignment up near the top, and it's called defont.com. It's like a Pixabay for type design. So designers, these are just the most recent ones added. Designers contribute these, typographers and type designers contribute these with limited licenses. So these are Creative Commons licenses that are different for each one. So you'll see that they're free for personal use, free for personal use, free for personal use, free for personal use, which means you can play around with it as much as you want for your personal use, but don't use it for a client, right? Without paying for it. And they'll give you details for how you can pay for it. All right. Now there are different themes for it because there are thousands and thousands of typefaces here, 76,257 right now. So what kind of type might I want? Let's see, if I look up tattoo, what might I get? So I'll get tribal, ones that look like this, some that are just symbols. So that means that they don't give me actual type at all. It means each letter is, is linked to a different vector symbol. I like this one. So if there's one that you think is interesting, here's the problem. This is how it's supposed to work in our new security for the campus. You're supposed to be able to download it and you can download it. And you guys can do that, but you're not gonna be able to load it into your computers. And then you open it up and this is how typefaces look in computers. They're either open type files or true type files. Either of them works on a Mac. They, I believe so. Yeah, it depends on the types of programs you know, which is preferable, but for, for Creative Suite, they're all good. So it's gonna ask you to do this, right? And I've talked to IT about it. We shouldn't have to have administrative privileges to install fonts or typefaces, but unfortunately, that's the new protocols of, of security. So we're not able to actually put them into the computer, which means that we could type with them in Photoshop or in Illustrator. But what we can do because we don't have administrative privileges on these. What we can do is this. If you see one you like, that you think might be interesting, you can click on it, and then you can type your text here. I would recommend at least starting to do it all in uppercase, because a lot of these typefaces are only in uppercase samples anyway. And for type design, uppercase is so much more readable than lowercase because of the, the kerning that's built into it, the space between the letters. So here we see it in, in regular, here we see it in italic. This is not finished. You know, we can modify this and modify this existing type, but this is now what I recommend you do. Zoom in on it and then take a screen grab. Now with that screen grab, I can go to Photoshop and I can do this with multiple typefaces. And I can bring it in as a smart object, drag and drop the screen grab in. Now I'm gonna cut up that screen grab. Well, it's still a smart object, let me make it bigger. So Command T, let me stretch it. I'll keep its native proportions. Okay. 
and then let me cut up the rest of it. So I'm going to duplicate it. Then I'll put the in where I think the in needs to go. And I'm not going to shrink it yet. And then I will select that out. And then I'll put progress where I think it should go. And I'm not going to shrink it yet. Okay. Okay. So now I get a sense of what that type might look like. And I want to identify advantages, disadvantages with it. One advantage is I love, absolutely love, how the I and the N are equally spaced, right? So it looks like a Roman numeral three. If I'm dealing with symmetry, that's really nice. I don't love how much space there is between the W and the O, right? How the R and the K feel really shortened. Same thing with what's called the kerning between the O and the G. There's a lot of overlap or there's a lot of space there, which I understand kind of needs to be there for this kind of design because they have little serifs on the edges. So I might get rid of some of those serifs, those little decorative bumps. So let's start playing with this, seeing if this is the way I want to go. And usually what I'll do is I'll put it all into a folder as well so it's easy to find. Right, so there's the in. I'm going to select all these, put them into a folder. And I'll just call this the tattoo text. And if I'm on my home computer where I have administrative privileges, I can always download that, that typeface, which gives me more options within programs. But we're still going to turn it into a vector. We're not going to be limited. This is how we kind of solve problems. Okay, what if I want a different type, maybe a clean, modern typeface? And there are zero results for clean or modern, so maybe I just try clean. Something like this, you know. There are a lot of hand-done typefaces. There are lots with little distortions. <laughs> Clean dirty is an interesting one. There are scripts type. So if I wanted something really, really epic, like this charge zard one, kind of for an action movie, let's click on it. Let's try our text. Submit. I have both with the distortions and without. Right. And I could screen grab that, put it in, see what I like. But we're going to be modifying this. And I think this has a lot to work with. So first you decide on your text blocking, your layout, and then you decide on just a general area of type design. Some of you might know already you want really kind of loopy type design. You want to build it yourself. So just you start drawing it. So the difference between Stranger Things, that typeface, that's a modification of an existing typeface versus Rye Ford's designs, they're always hand, hand drawn typefaces, type solutions. Or a Kiko Sternberger, her movie posters, which use a mix sometimes. They are existing typefaces that are modified. Sometimes she creates them herself. So I've actually never heard, I'm sure it's happened, because a typeface is a really hard thing <laughs> to say is derivative, because almost all typefaces are derivative, right? That T looks an awful lot like that T. So though when you create a typeface, it is your copyrighted work. If you change it really at all, an argument can be made that it's a new typeface. If you stretch it, if you add serifs, if you make it bolder, 